Hello, I'm Gary Tintero, director of the Museum of Fine Arts Houston. I'm delighted to welcome you to Vincent van Gogh, His Life in Art, a truly extraordinary exhibition that spans the entirety of van Gogh's career. Through over 60 key works, you'll follow van Gogh from his decision to become an artist to the final months of his life and watch him grow from a devoted student, he taught himself to draw from prints and manuals, to the iconic painter of light and color that we all recognize today. Most of the works in this exhibition come to us from the Van Gogh Museum in Amsterdam and the Krollermuller Museum in Otterlo, also in the Netherlands, which are the key custodians of Van Gogh's legacy. As this exhibition's sole venue, the Museum of Fine Arts Houston is delighted to share these extraordinary works, rarely seen outside of Europe, with you today. And we are especially proud of the loans from private collections, foundations, and other museums in America and Europe who have generously contributed to this project. This painting dates from the earliest stage of Van Gogh's career as an artist, when he was still living in the Netherlands. David Bomford, Audrey Jones Beck, Curator of European Art and Chairman of Conservation. What we see here in this very evocative painting is a fragment of a church. The old church tower at Noonan is one of Vincent van Gogh's key early works. He moved back to live with his parents who were living in Noonan at the end of 1883. And at that point, the old church just outside the limits of the village was being torn down. Van Gogh records it in the last weeks of its life. The nave has gone, the spire has gone, and this fragment that we see here is about to go too. It's a very symbolic church because it's surrounded by the graves of all the peasants who've worked in the village throughout the centuries. And it has tremendous atmosphere. There are wheeling crows around the top of the church and the little crosses of the graves just stand out in the rather scrubby grass that's left around the base of the tower. This was where Van Gogh's own father was to be buried in March 1885. So it's a nostalgic painting, but it's also a very sad painting. It's the disappearance of a way of life that Van Gogh celebrated in his paintings that he made at Noonan. Vincent van Gogh's father was a clergyman, and van Gogh had intended to follow in his father's footsteps. He trained to become a pastor, and he tried to make it a career, but his personality, his rather blunt way of behaving, was very off-putting to people. And so it was a career he eventually had to abandon, but he spent many days, weeks, just sitting in his room reading his Bible. He was intensely religious. This is one of van Gogh's great portraits, painted in Paris. And it shows a woman called Agostina Segatori, who was the Italian owner of a cafe called Le Tambourin. The theme of the cafe was the tambourine. So the stools on which people sat and the tables at which they sat were all shaped like tambourines. She was a spectacular character, tremendously fashionable, tremendously stylish. And she has this extraordinary hairstyle where it's swept up into a great peak and wound around with red feathers. So she would have been a, a memorable character to meet in Paris. Agostina in her cafe would allow artists to show their work. In the case of Vincent, this was sometimes his own pictures, but sometimes pictures he owned. He had a great collection of Japanese prints himself, visible here on the wall behind the figure of Agostina. Japanese prints were extremely popular in Paris at this time. Bradley Bailey, Ting Sung and Wei Feng Chao Curator of Asian Art. Japanese prints probably are in the background of this painting because they were everywhere in Paris at this point. They were being imported in vast quantities and they were very, very popular. The way that these ukiyo-e, these Japanese woodblock prints, are displayed in the background would have been typical of a 19th century French interior. They were probably framed, hung very close to each other. You can almost see the lines that sort of suggest the outlines of frames as they recede into the background. But the print on the far right is most likely a bijinga or a beauty portrait. It is probably of a courtesan. It's very difficult to tell because of Van Gogh's abbreviated brush strokes, but there appear to be two figures. The taller of the two is most certainly a courtesan. 
when we normally see a Japanese print of a woman like this in what looks like a resplendent flowing robe with then another smaller person behind them. This is usually a courtesan and her kamaro, her attendant, her courtesan in training. The prints to the left, which appear almost to be two little white dots and then vertical blue slashes, are most likely warrior prints. I believe that is meant to suggest the face, blue sleeves, and wide hakama pants of a warrior or perhaps a samurai. The Rocks is a masterpiece that is owned by the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. The painting shows a rocky hillside with a little oak tree bent by the wind. And we know the location of this piece of landscape. We know it's on the side of a hill called Mont Major, which was a few miles outside the city of Arles, where Van Gogh was living in 1888. And he would go there to this hilltop relatively frequently, so this was a favorite spot of his. Van Gogh painted this en plein air, a French term for painting outdoors. It was not easy to paint outside, and he complained about it often in letters to his brother Theo. We shouldn't underestimate the difficulty of painting out of doors. Setting up a canvas with your easel, your paint box, your little stool in windy conditions, you had to anchor everything that might get blown away by the wind. It was a very, very difficult thing to do. The other question that has to be asked is how easy is it in bright sunlight to paint true colors? Because if you paint what appear to be true colors under bright sunlight, when you get back indoors, everything looks incredibly dark. And so it's very important when you, when you paint out of doors to paint in a subdued light under a parasol so that the colors, when you get back inside, are the true ones. It's a technical question, but a very real one to the plein air painters in the 19th century. So you never quite knew what challenges you were going to face when you set up your easel to paint some scene in the open air. Bradley Bailey. This is a still life done by Van Gogh very near the end of his life while he was in the asylum in Saint Remy. It's a very spare yellow background, what appears to be a Provencal kind of amphora-like jar, probably terracotta, filled to the brim with blue irises. They are tightly packed in the vase, and some of them seem to rise up amidst very jagged blades. And in other cases, the blades of the iris seem to rise up in almost a sinuous way. And then over on the lower right, we see that Van Gogh has also depicted what appears to be a broken group of irises whose stems appear somewhat bent and they hang down. This painting demonstrates the influence that Japanese prints had on Van Gogh's style. Whenever I look at this painting, I wonder if Van Gogh is doing a few witty things. He obviously knew still life, being Dutch, but I get the sense that he is really experimenting with the aesthetics of Japanese art in this painting. The flowers appear so flat, so graphic, almost printed in places. And yet he has tried to do some volumetric shading around the amphora. So it's a very curious combination. I think the thick blank outlines that are visible not only on the blooms of the iris, but also on the blades of many of the iris, most assuredly recall some of the work of Japanese printmakers of the early 19th century. In Japanese art, when we see purple irises against a yellow background, we immediately think of the work of the great 18th century painter Ogata Korin. His famous masterpieces of the iris screens were, were very well known in Paris at the time and had also been reproduced and copied in print. They were highly, highly influential in Japanese art. The contrasting colors and bold outlines have made this one of Van Gogh's most recognizable compositions. He sent it to his brother Theo in Paris as one of his last shipments from Saint-Rémy.